Hi everyone, it's Shay. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm actually surprised that I haven't talked about this yet on my channel, but we will be talking about my experiences living in different countries all over the world. A lot of you probably don't know that I actually have spent time living in Asian countries when I was in high school, so I want to talk about that and my experiences there and also compare that to what it's like living in European countries. So today I will be sharing why I went to each place, what I did there, some fun experiences or memories. I'm going to do a quick overview of my experiences in each of the cities and then at the end I'm going to answer questions that you guys actually asked me on Instagram so then we can like dive into a little bit more specific questions that you want to know. To start, the cities and countries that I've lived in are Taipei, Taiwan, Seoul, South Korea, Budapest, Hungary, and Rome, Italy. I was in South Korea and Taiwan almost about 10 years ago now, so forgive me if my memory isn't the greatest or if things may have changed by now. That definitely was a long time ago versus the few years ago that I was in Rome and Budapest. So let's go back to the beginning. The first country that I went to abroad was Seoul, South Korea. I will put up photos, but just keep in mind that when I traveled here, I was 16, 15 or 16, and I only had like a little iPod touch. So the photos will be very bad quality. I apologize in advance, but they're the only photos that I have of my memories there. I went over there for modeling. I used to model when I was in high school. I was scouted and I started modeling um, just in Arizona where I grew up. And then um, I had my first international modeling job in Seoul, South Korea, which was insane. But basically models go to international markets to build up their portfolios and their experience. And then, um, you know, they can kind of work wherever. I lived right near, I think it was called Shinsa Station. If you're from there and you want to know like where I was, that's kind of the general area. So I went over there actually like on Christmas Eve and then I stayed until March of the following year. So I was there and I, modeled. Um, every day I would go to castings and then I would have photo shoots and we had a manager who would drive us around to all these different castings. So, you know, I didn't need to figure out a lot on my own. My apartment was set up and I stayed in a model apartment with um, other models from Brazil uh, and Russia and Poland mainly. So there was also a language barrier there. I was 16 at the time and I was very shy and nervous and I didn't really like make a lot of friends because I was just like very, I was shy, I was scared. It was a whole new country that I had no idea what I was doing. Besides that, let's get into my thoughts on the city. So the city itself, I loved Seoul. I thought it was so beautiful. It was very cool and just very like, so many different things to explore, really easy to get around. Once I finally got the courage to like take the metro and the first time I walked down to the like subway station I just came right back up the stairs because I was like I don't know how to do this I don't know how to buy a ticket <laughs> once I figured that out though I was going all over the place I took so many little trips by myself on the weekends to see the different temples and I just loved like the architecture of the temples were super cool I did a lot of just like solo traveling because the other models in the apartment just kind of wanted to like party the whole time and I was like oh I really want to see the city that I'm living in so I went to Seoul Tower I went to a bunch of the different districts to explore. I love trying like the street food was really cool. The street food there was very good. Food wise, for the most part, I liked the street food. I liked, um, there's a lot of different meats that I was like a little bit, I was kind of questionable because I couldn't fully understand what was what. So sometimes I was like, I don't really know what I'm eating. <laughs> but you know, I don't have, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan or anything. So the food I would say probably wasn't my favorite in comparison to European countries, but I definitely did try to try new things. As far as the people, so nice. I felt so safe in Korea all the time. I mean, I was 16 at the time, so I was very young and I never felt unsafe. I mean, obviously I didn't walk around alone in the city at night. Even so, just like, I never felt threatened or that I was gonna get attacked or like robbed or anything. Korean people are very respectful of others and I feel like they just have this nature of being more inclusive and just like this community feel. Whereas in America, everyone's kind of doing everything for themselves, thinking about themselves, just like very kind of more selfish. 
So that's the thing I loved about Koreans is they're just like so welcoming, especially to foreigners, especially to me, because <laughs> I really did stick out there. There would be a lot of times where people just wanted to take pictures of me or with me. And I was very confused at first. I thought they wanted me to take a picture of them somewhere and then they would like have me join their family photo. So they probably thought I was like a celebrity or something. Um, I had a lot of kids just like staring at me whenever I was on the Metro or walking around because I do look, I'm very tall and I do look very different, but it was fun. People were always very nice to me. I had some people who came up to me like on the Metro who would ask me to talk with them so they could practice English because they just knew that like I was American. So that was kind of fun sometimes. I was like, sure. Yeah, people are always so nice. Even though there's like a language barrier, they never get frustrated, which is a thing here in America. You know, people were like, get so frustrated if people can't speak English. The Koreans are just so nice and so friendly, like always have a smile on their face. Everyone just seems like so happy there. And I just really loved, like the environment felt really nice. I felt really great. You know, besides sometimes modeling was super hard and long hours, the city itself, I loved it. And I really want to go back to Seoul. That would be amazing. I, one thing I do want to point out is I did not try to learn the language over there besides the simple like greetings. Um, but yeah, it was too, it was way too hard for me to pick up on. I know that was such a quick overview of Korea, but there's obviously so much more I could dive into. Let me know if you want to know more about that experience. Then the following summer, or maybe it was two summers later, I can't really remember. I went to Taipei, Taiwan again to model. So I was there for the whole summer that I would say that I liked the city of Seoul more. I think I saw probably more of Taiwan because I had a lot of different jobs all over Taiwan. So I took trains to the different cities like Tainan and I can't remember the names of the other ones, but I definitely was like traveling more across Taiwan. I had a better experience there as far as the people that I met, like my roommates. I really liked my roommates a lot more there. I got really close with my Brazilian roommate and then my Polish roommate, we all just had a lot of fun and I think it was just like bonded better with them. The modeling experience though in Taiwan was worse, way worse than Korea. I was not at a good agency. I mean, I can make a video on this if you guys are interested, but it's it's a very tough experience, which is why I'm no longer modeling anymore. Food, I would say the same kind of thing as Korea. You know, just very different cuisine. A lot of times I didn't know what I was eating, um, but I was open to trying new things. I was also there when a big typhoon came through. That was a crazy experience. I had never experienced anything like that. So it was really scary. Yeah, my roommates and I, like we just stocked up on food and stayed in our apartment for a while and just like went out after to just see like what happened after the storm. And it was just like a lot of damage, trees and stuff knocked over. It was crazy. It was actually like pretty scary. The wind, the sound of the wind that you could hear at night, terrifying but a very interesting experience. So yes, I got to experience a Taiwanese typhoon when I was there. I would say the people, I can't, I can't exactly remember a lot of interaction with people because I didn't have as much free time to explore as I did in Korea, but I would say probably I had a better experience just as far as like seeing more of the Korean culture. I think I just, I, I probably would prefer Korea more, but, Taipei was really cool. I went to Taipei 101, which is the really insanely tall. I can't remember it, how tall it is, but it's so tall. Um, so I went to the top of that tower, which is obviously really cool to see the view from up there. Yeah, so I still made sure to go to a lot of the different places there and you know try my best to try all the food and just kind of get a feel for what I liked. Just as far as the city and how it looks in the feel of it, I would say I probably preferred Seoul over Taipei. Quick overview of Rome because if you've been watching my channel for a while or if you haven't, I have all of my Rome vlogs way back because that's how I started this channel was vlogging my time in Rome. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because you already know my thoughts if you've watched those videos. Super walkable. I mean, I walked everywhere. They have a lot of different forms of transportation like the Metro, buses, whatever. They're just not reliable. You never know when they're gonna show up in Italy. Buses, trams, you can't really plan for a time because they never show up on time. So I never got too frustrated by that because I was never like really rushing anywhere to go, but also not the greatest when it comes to like feeling unsafe that I had so many creepy situations with like just creepy men. Whereas like I didn't experience that in Korea. Places would be packed, but I felt fine. Like I didn't feel like anyone was gonna 
do something gross or weird. But in Rome, yeah, old, old, creepy Italian men will be really, really weird. So um, yeah, that's something that's not very fun. Most everyone speaks English there, so you don't really have to worry about it. You know, if you if you don't want to learn language or if you're just like passing through for to be a tourist. But if you do try to speak Italian, people will generally be very nice um, and help correct you. Like sometimes if I'd go to the bar to order stuff, if I said something wrong, the people there would make my little correction and not be like, in not in a mean way, but just helping me so that way I could learn. I'd be like, oh, okay. Um, but you know, sometimes they will, you'll say something in Italian and then they'll speak to you in English because they're like, I know, she's not Italian. <laughs> but I would say for the most part, when you try to speak the language, they're like, people, people will be very encouraging. And then, you know, I just loved Italy. Like when I was there, I went to uh, Venice, Perugia, Tivoli, Orvieto, Monza, Palermo, Cefalu, Norma, Procida, Burano, Murano. Yeah, so I went to so many different Italian cities when I was there because I really wanted to experience more of Italy and I still have a lot of Italy to see. Trains are awesome because they get you all over the country and for relatively inexpensive cost to, to travel. So that's another thing I really like about Italy and being able to travel all over. Obviously food is amazing. Like seriously, I loved even just simple things of like when I would cook at home, you can just tell the quality of the food is so much better than it is here in America. When I came back home, I just feel like food here is so bad. Like the quality of our food is awful, genuinely. And I just felt so much healthier. I didn't have a lot of like stomach issues or health issues when I was in Italy. I feel like I also had probably the best experiences outside of Rome. It's just super touristy. So if you want a more authentic feel of Italy, then explore some of the smaller towns. Yeah, that's a quick overview, like I said. Okay, and then finally Budapest was the last, yeah, I guess it was the last time I was in Europe. So I went to Budapest because I met a guy in Rome that I started dating. He was originally from Hungary. So that summer after I left Rome, after studying abroad, I went to stay with him in Budapest. That's why I was there. And that's why I was only there for about two and a half months, I think, because I didn't get, you know, I couldn't get a visa. Like I could stay up until 90 days, but anyways. Budapest, amazing city. It was never really on my radar before I went to Rome. Like I, hadn't really heard much about it, but when I was in Rome, a lot of people, like a lot of my peers were going to Budapest and just saying how amazing it was. And I was like, okay, I gotta check out the city. So beautiful. Like I, it's so amazing. I loved it so much. The second I got there, I was like, wow, there's just something about the city that's really amazing. I, first of all, love the architecture. The architecture of the parliament building is so beautiful to me. I just feel like, and at night when it lights up, it's just like, I remember the first night I went to see the view from the Danube River and it just like took my breath away. Like I just had this moment, it was like this nice summer night and I just had this moment where I was like, whoa, this is so beautiful. I'm so happy that I'm here. Seeing Buddha Castle across the way and then the parliament building, and just the river at night itself and all the lights, it's just, it's really stunning. It's a stunning city. Getting around is very easy, very efficient. They have like very clean, new metro systems and then, you know, some like older ones. But for the most part, like getting around super easy, I just got one of those passes that's like, I don't know, a month or something, kind of one of those types of things. So you don't have to pay like every time you use it. I did not even bother trying to learn Hungarian. It's such a hard language besides just like the, you know, greetings, goodbye, thank you, hello, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, understanding anything is pretty tough, but for the most part, people speak English if you go to like restaurants and stuff. Um, there, But there's sometimes that people don't, depending on where you are there, but you can kind of figure it out. Food wise was good. I really liked the street food, <laughs> like the langos. It's all like unhealthy, very unhealthy stuff, but like it's very good. You know, like a lot of meat stuff, but I, I do like meat so that worked out for me they also have a lot of variety like more variety of food than rome does you know they have different types of cuisines it's whereas i feel like italy is very focused on just like italian food i loved the baths like the thermal baths or whatever they're called uh this is like a very big thing there but it's very cool um and really fun experience 
I went to this really cool event where they cleared off, they have like these, all these big bridges that all look very different crossing the Danube. I can't remember if they had all of the bridges blocked off or just this one. They had this one night where they just like closed off the bridges and then people were playing music and just like having fun, just gathering on the bridges. And it was just like this fun little summer event. Super cool. Like Budapest has a lot of really cool events like that. I don't know, it just makes it feel like such a fun, lively city. And then I also happened to be there when Sea at Festival was happening, which is kind of like, it's like a Coachella, kind of like a mini or Coachella, but it happened, it takes place on one of the islands. There's like multiple islands. I can't remember the name of it. I don't know, but it takes place on one of the islands on the Danube. And then they have like the whole thing is converted to this big festival. And then we just bought a ticket for a day, but there, it's like a few days long maybe a week, a few days long. I don't know, I can't remember. Super fun. <laughs> we got one of those crazy Hungarian storms that happened when we were there. So it was like pouring rain, thunderstorm just out of nowhere, but they kind of made it more fun. Like it's just, it was a very fun, cool experience to go to that music festival. And they had like a lot of artists that everyone would recognize. So much to do there, so much to see, a lot of really interesting culture and history that I didn't know about and everything's very cheap, which is also very great. It's just like coming from LA, the cost of everything just seemed so amazing. And yeah. Now for this section, I'm going to answer questions that you asked me on Instagram. So first off, what were the people like? I kind of touched on this in some of the parts that I talked about. Asian countries, I felt like people were very nice, very welcoming just very respectful. Also just very excited to see me and meet me. And that's like a fun feeling. <laughs> Rome, I would say that people were very nice, but also could have just been because I'm an American and they're like, oh yeah, you're a tourist. In other Italian cities, I found the people to be very nice, very interesting, especially if you talk with students, people are just like very smart. In Hungary, I definitely had more experiences with people who weren't super nice. I was also prepared for that a little bit. Yes, I did have a lot of experiences with very nice people, or maybe they just like seem like they're not super nice, but they're just, I don't know, having a bad day or something. As far as the language, I didn't even bother trying to speak it, but I, I kind of get the sense that if I didn't speak it well, people would be like, okay, just talk in English. Like, I don't know. Do you recommend living there? I would say all the countries that I've been to, yes. But I would say that if you did choose to actually live in any of these countries, I would try my best to actually learn the language so you could have more authentic experience. I think you could probably get away with living in Rome the best if you only speak English, but I would probably try to pick up Italian while I'm there. But I would say for the most part, like people really do speak English well in Rome. Someone asked what my daily routines were in every country. In Taiwan and Korea, it was wake up, check my schedule and get on the the van to go to castings or a photo shoot. That was literally like a daily thing. So that was pretty much it. And then when I knew I had free time, that's when I figured out how to get to different temples or different sites to see Rome. It was, I was studying abroad. So I'd wake up and uh, go to class. And yeah, Monday through Friday was basically just like going to class. And then maybe I'd like go out to restaurants at night. And then on the weekends, that's when I would go do like little weekend trips uh, by train. Budapest kind of depended on the day. I would work remote. So sometimes I would go to a cafe and just like do my work um, and then sightsee later. Or my boyfriend at the time, like we would kind of do our own thing and then kind of regroup later on in the day. Yeah, so it kind of just depended on the day, but there was a lot of sightseeing, a lot of things to do in Budapest. So every day was very different. Were you traveling alone or with someone? Korea and Taiwan, I went there by myself, got on the flight by myself, even though I knew everything was planned for me over there because I had an apartment and everything set up by the modeling agency. I still was technically alone. Like I didn't go with family or friends. Rome, I went through my school study abroad program. So I met some friends over there. Budapest, like I said, was with my boyfriend at the time. And then someone asked, did you have a job or were you studying? As we know, um, Taiwan and Korea had the job of modeling. So that's how I got a work visa. I was young at the time, so I don't know any of the work that went into that visa, but I know my parents had to do a lot because I was under 18. So they had to handle that mainly anyways. Um, but yeah, so I had a work visa through that. 
Rome was a study visa that I got help through the school with. Budapest, I didn't have any sort of visa because like I said, I wasn't there for more than 90 days, but I did have a remote summer internship, which was paying me. So that was really good because it helped fund a lot of my travels, even though I did have savings, um, it was good to have like a remote job. I was just doing like social media stuff. Someone asked, did you learn the language? Was it difficult? Uh, as I mentioned, did not learn Korean or Mandarin. I think they also speak Cantonese as well, or some people do in Taiwan. Uh, yeah, didn't even bother. It's very hard. I like I tried a little bit to learn some phrases, but it's very hard for me. And my main focus was like, I was very busy with working there. Uh, Rome, Italy, obviously we all know I'm learning Italian. Budapest, no, not at all. Sometimes my boyfriend at the time tried to help me learn some stuff, but it's just such a difficult language. I mean, I'm amazed by it. I think it's so interesting. And just hearing like him and his friends speak it, it's such a cool language, but so hard to learn. Very hard, like when I see these words, I'm like, how is that pronounced? <laughs> so yeah, just the basic stuff, just to get around. But I think I just relied on him as well because obviously he spoke Hungarian. Oh, this is an interesting question. How did your viewpoint change of America while traveling? I mean, I think I already kind of had this view of America as this place that's just full of a lot of people who are very selfish and not open to experiencing other cultures. And that just kind of became more solidified when I traveled. People think America is like the best country and the best place to be. And I do not agree with that. And I'm probably gonna have people come for me in the comments. I just feel like there's a lot more countries that have so much to offer that people don't even realize because they're so focused on, oh, just America and how great it is and how much I want to go there. And I do like living here. I love where I live in Los Angeles and I'm very happy that I get to live here. I'm very grateful for that. But I also think that people are just too closed off and not experiencing more of the world and meeting really cool people that live in other countries. I think learning about the cultures of other countries is really amazing. And I just feel like people a lot more open and even like a little bit more interesting in other countries. And like I said, in Asia, just the people there have this feeling, it's just this feeling of like everyone cares about each other and you don't have to worry about being so scared of crazy things happening. Also just like the gun violence in America is so bad. And it's very interesting because when I've talked to a lot of Europeans, they actually mention that like right off the bat. My boyfriend at the time, he would always say like, I feel like I'm gonna go to America and just get shot. Everyone's just walking around with guns all the time. And it is scary because people see all this scary stuff on the news. So that's like a big thing that people don't have to worry about, out of control gun violence. So just like learning about those types of perspectives from people living in other countries is very interesting as well. Finally, someone asked any tips for people who want to live in other countries or potentially these ones. I would say make sure you have a plan. The easiest way to live in other countries is probably a student visa. Finding a job in another country can be very hard. So trying to apply to jobs in other countries is very hard, especially if you don't speak the language. So don't really rely on that. And then I would say if you do have a plan, like for me, I know I want to go to Italy next year and I've known that for about two years. So I've just been saving, saving, saving money. And the pandemic was rough, but it obviously helps because I was able to save up more money because I didn't go out much and I didn't do a lot. So I was able to save money. So it was kind of like a good thing in a way. So saving up a lot of money, that way you just feel comfortable and you don't ever feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna get stuck over there without a plan or without any money. Also, just as far as when you're actually there, just try to do your best to like step outside your comfort zone. There's gonna be times where you're really scared and feel pretty lonely probably. Um, but there's always ways, like especially with social media, to connect with other people out there. Maybe like if you wanna find other Americans, there's always like expat groups. It's gonna be hard. Like this process of me trying to move to Italy is hard. As I've been looking at stuff, trying to figure out visas and paperwork and where I'm gonna live and all this stuff, it's a headache but it's worth it if you really wanna go. Don't let that kind of stuff stop you. Like, it's not just gonna be like, oh, let me buy a ticket and there I go. Don't let people tell you, oh, why would you do that? You know, there's gonna be people who are like, you can't do that. I mean, if, in the beginning, when I told people I wanted to go back to Italy, they're like, oh, well, that's gonna be kind of hard or how would you do that? Like, 
I know it's gonna be hard, but I do wanna put in the effort to be able to do it because it's a big passion and dream of mine. Another thing you could do is just like go live somewhere for a summer, you know, like before you hit that 90 day mark. Um, so you could kind of experience it for about three months, but then, you know, you don't have to go through any sort of visas or anything. That's kind of my advice. And I know this video is very long. <laughs> okay, I could probably make a whole series on this and maybe I should. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to expand more on the place, like each of the places that I've lived. Maybe I could do a specific video for each one because this video is very long and I have so much more that I could say. So definitely let me know if there's anything in this video that interests you. Write it down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you are a language learner because I post a lot of language learning content. I will have an exciting announcement soon about when I'm going to Italy, so be sure to stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video and learning more about my experiences living abroad. If you have any further questions, just comment them down below and I will try my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all soon. Bye!